Oh, how do? Hey, welcome to a program that's a bit different. It's about a place, and that place is called Doddoth. Now, you might never have been here, but by the time I finish telling you about it, you might even want to spend your holidays here. Well, actually, it's no problem because there's so many hotels in a village as small as this, you just wouldn't believe it. You'd never be without a room. But it's more important than just a place where there are hotels. There are people here, genuine people, doing genuine things to help the community. It's a very old place. In fact, it's mentioned in the Doomsday Book. But you won't find anything older than, well, let's say, 1641, shall we? Because it's still got a building that was here at the time of the Civil War, and it's still standing, so it isn't one of the ruins that Oliver knocked about a bit. So, what is Dodworth? Who are the people who live in Dodworth and look after it? We're going to find out right now. Are you going to come with me? Good. You'll love it. And then we might even get you to come for a day, eh? Right. Here we go. The Doomsday Book, completed in 1086 by order of William the Conqueror, shows Doddoth as being a very small settlement of four households, half a league of woodland, three ploughlands and two ploughs. The lord of the manor, Swain son of Alric, was a minor Saxon noble who owed allegiance to the Norman baron Ilbert de Lacy, lord of Pontefract. Not much to shout about, you might think but it was twice the size of Barnsley at the time. In the Middle Ages, Doddoth Crossroads was a trading place for salt brought to Yorkshire from Cheshire. By the 16th and 17th centuries, Doddoth, like Barnsley, had a linen industry of its own. In 1829, riots broke out when weavers from Barnsley invaded Doddoth, protesting that the Doddoth weavers were undercutting Barnsley prices. The Old Weavers' Cottages, three-storey buildings with attics where the weaving took place in the lower rooms, are still evident on the High Street. In 1813, Doddoth became a township in the parish of Silkston, in the West Riding of Yorkshire. In 1860, it became an independent parish. And in 1894, it was made into an urban district council with its own officers. In 1974, this was abolished under the local government reforms and Doddoth was transferred to the newly created metropolitan borough of Barnsley. As in Barnsley, coal mining had overtaken the linen industry by the 1860s. And a hundred or so years later, Doddoth had become a typical Yorkshire mining village. Like most such places, it suffered a number of pit accidents and disasters. Among them, the Husker Mine disaster at Silkston in 1838, in which 26 children died. These are now commemorated by a special memorial. One of the people who knows most about this is Sandra Birkinshaw. Sandra, what made the people of Dodworth, and you in particular, decide that you needed a memorial to the miners? Well firstly I come from a mining background and then I was contacted by Steve Wyatt who was the instigator of this and uh, basically because of my mining background I went to a meeting and they asked me to be secretary at that meeting. Right. Uh, but um, I think that every person who's given their life Whatever job it is, needs to be remembered. I think that was the important thing. And of course, this was a very, very high mining area. And so these men needed to be remembered. How did you come up with the design? The design there again involved a lot with, with Steve Wyatt. He did a lot of the design for it and uh, provided the, the wheel. Um, and then we also decided that the children of the area needed to be involved 
and so you'll note that some of the photographs uh, around the side of the the map uh, have uh, 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 been done by the children of the two schools, Kerrisforth and St John's. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say that if you hadn't done this, mining would be slipping out of living memory as far as Dodd is concerned? I don't think it would have been slipping out of living memory uh, because I don't think people forget that easy. There's only some people remember. And that, I mean, there are, there are people that are, there's no, there's no names on the memorial because there are still some living relatives of uh, some of the men that died. That, that was deliberate not to put names on it, was Yes, it? yes. Uh, firstly, you can always make it, it's very easy to make a mistake. <laughs> and if you miss a name off, then it causes or great Or spell problems. one wrongly. Yes, <laughs> it causes great problems. Uh, and But also the fact that there are still some living relatives of the men that yeah. are, uh, who are, who are commemorated here. Yes. Well, it's very apt, isn't it? And I do notice there's a great deal of respect paid to it, for instance. You never pass it when there are no flowers to somebody or another on it. <laughs> exactly. I think it's the same gentleman who puts these flowers on every week. You know, so, um, yeah, it it's, looks great. And, and I think because it's in the centre of the village, it really does stand out and does credit to Dodworth itself. Mm. So after this, what next as far as you're concerned? <laughs> well, I'm helping to work with the uh, memorial group, the War Memorial Group. I'm working with, uh, with, those, uh, with that group in order to commemorate all the men who had died throughout the First World War and probably later on the Second World War with that group. I'm also involved by I've, uh, my own grandfather's memorial uh, disappeared, mining, uh, not mining memorial, sorry, war memorial disappeared and I've just had a replica done uh, of that memorial with 140 names on and it's waiting to go up into a church now. <laughs> So that's your next job, That's the next job, but it's, it's not Dodworth no. Church because no. he, my grandfather came from what was known as the Bear Bones at Barnsley. Right. Or Bear right. Bones, as people <laughs> say it. Yes, you've got to get your pronunciation <laughs> right here, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> Took me ages to stop saying Dodworth. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More power to your elbow, Sandra, yeah, and thank uh, thanks for giving us some information about this wonderful memorial. Thank you. Thank you. But... King Cole's days were numbered. By 1987, the Doddoth Redbrook Colliery was closed. By 1992, the last of the Yorkshire deep mines had gone. Economically, Doddoth, like the rest of South Yorkshire, was decimated. But what was Doddoth like in the 1980s? It was a typical village, self-contained and surrounded by farms and fields due to the green belt that enclosed it. Although it did have industrial scars. The old Dodder Colliery was replaced by new buildings, bringing new businesses, new jobs and inward investment. The development of the hotel and leisure industries followed. The overshadowing colliery slag heap was landscaped and planted with trees to make an attractive wooded hill. The Japanese company Koyo Bearings Europe Limited was one of the first to establish itself on the former site of Doddoth Colliery and bring in new investment. It was soon followed by others. KDA Wholesale Limited is a building trade and DIY hardware business. It was set up by Cliff Tibble, himself a former miner who was made redundant. In the busy main hall, we talked to Ian Dowell, the floor manager. Ian Dowell, your shop floor manager here at KDA. Uh, this is a new industry, isn't it, for, Bar for Dodworth? I mean, how long has it been going? Um, it, this, this is actually quite a new premises. Uh, we've been here nearly three years now. Um, we were actually just across the road uh, before, um, and then before that we were at Summer Lane, so we've moved to Dodworth, um, but we've been going about 20 years altogether. And uh, that's, uh, this is one of the new industries that opened up from somebody who was a former miner. That's right, yes, the boss used to be a miner, used to run, run the mine, yes. 
And how many people work here now then in Dodders? Uh, uh, at this one, we've got 20 people working at the minute. We're, um, we're hoping to grow bigger and bigger, um, which we are doing, so it's, it's very good at the minute. All oh, right, and um, you know what? You think that the future looks uh, good then? Absolutely, yeah. We're looking to expand all the time. Um, we've just got a new Christmas area up on the top there. Um, so we're just getting bigger and bigger every time and we've got a new plant area open which is really good. Well that sounds really optimistic for the prospects of uh, Dodder then. Thanks ever so much Ian. Thank you. Since 1987 prosperity has gradually returned to Dodder. The high street is now full of thriving shops. A large housing development which has doubled the size of Dodworth has been built. And facilities have grown to match the expansion, the new and the large, and the small and traditional. But the life of a community goes deeper than purely material matters. Doddeth has always had its traditions and wider concerns. Doddeth, like every other village, town and city in Britain, suffered grievous losses in the First World War. 25,000 people are thought to have attended the ceremony which inaugurated the War Memorial in 1925. The War Memorial and Doddeth Library remain a focal point at the top of High Street and have an ongoing story. Here's Robert Green. Robert. How much have you been involved in what's happening here at Doddeth? Well, basically it started uh, a few years ago when I retired and I joined the Barnsley District U3A. I then took over and helped create a family history research group because it grew uh, number-wise over the years. And because I'm a Doddeth resident, I felt I would like to use the library as a research facility using the computers there and last year to recognize the 100th anniversary of the outbreak of war we had a, a day at Priory Campus, our U3A to look at the connections between all the different groups in our U3A and particularly in our case family history I asked my members let's find out what did Grandad do in the war and from that four of us then decided well we're at Dodworth we have a lovely war memorial and on it 55 names why don't we research each of these names and importantly find out about their lives but also connect and very importantly from my point of view living relatives and this is what we've been doing now for about 18 months. And each of our soldiers has a story. I should imagine it took a lot of research to get them absolutely spot on and, and, and actually connect with the village itself and make it pertinent to the people who live here now. Well, very much so. Um, we feel that we've probably put around about 50 hours per soldier but what I haven't said already is as we've researched and talked to people in the village and used the internet which is our main resource uh, we found three possibly four more soldiers who we feel should be on the memorial You've been very much involved uh, through the U3A, which, as we all know, is a very worthwhile organisation. But it's gone further than that, hasn't it, as far as you're concerned? Well, yes. I mean, if we go back in time um, with me working, I started to research my family history. And it was at that point when I started researching my family history, finding he was born in Barnsley, I felt, well, maybe this is where I belong. I've now researched my family and I go back to my fifth great-grandfather who was born and brought up in Wursborough Village. Is your own personal feeling about Doddeth itself? I love Doddeth as a village, I love the people here and I think it was my maternal grandfather who was a Lancashire lad and he won the military medal twice. He joined the uh, Manchester Regiment and he went through the whole of World War I and eventually he did actually train American troops 
but winning the military medal twice I felt and I always have his when I come here I always have his little bar um, in my pocket because I remember him and I want us to remember these soldiers as well so Vargin District U3A very much uh, not just family history but also social side of everything. Indeed and it's gone further than that of course because you've got these magnificent gardens in front of the library which uh, I'm, I'm told you were a little bit involved in. Yeah a little bit involved. <laughs> the, the, the idea was that uh, we ought to create more of a peace garden rather than a memorial garden. We have a lovely memorial here, uh, we have our miners memorial and when we look at all these soldiers, so many of them were actually miners here in Dodwis and the local collieries. And I feel with two beds outside the library and we have soldiers who died in both world wars and we would like to hopefully create memorial areas in the two raised beds outside the library to recognise those soldiers, World War I and World War II. Robert Green, thank you very much. Thank you. Over the three decades since the closure of the coal industry, Doddoth has made great strides, but they haven't been trouble-free. Jack Carr, for years a councillor representing Doddoth Ward on the Barnsley Metropolitan Borough Council, has fought Doddoth's case and continues to do so. Jack, how important is the Miners' Welfare Club to Doddoth and how long has it been going and what has it done? It's very important to Doddoth. Obviously, it's been going now, the club itself, about 35, 36 years. But the actual welfare itself, looking, looking well above 100 years. But CISRO took over in, in, in 51 and we had a, we've had a, a 60-year lease with the local boundary authority. Uh, for, for, and we do again next year for, to, for a further lease, which will be no problem. But uh, we've been here, as I say, a long, long time. Has it always been known as the community centre? No, it's been Dorothy Mines Welfare uh, all, basically all the time. Uh, it's Dorothy Mines Welfare, but, and, but it, is a bit, it is the hub of the Dorothy Mines community. A lot of events in here, the sporting and recreation facilities, is in, in our welfare mm -hmm. and it's well used on a, on a daily basis. And Indeed, yes, I was going to say, what what sporting facilities have you? Because it is yeah, really important here, isn't yeah, it, we've, sport? We're seven at the present time. We've got, obviously, got football, junior football, which we've, we've 14 junior sides. 14? Yeah, and, and two senior sides. We've also got the, the we've, uh, we've five bowling sides, plays on three, four different days a week. And we and obviously they're busy throughout the the summer these these bowling greens. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they they have winter tickets as well. Pay for a winter ticket to play all year round. So the greens are open all year round, both greens, and they're well used all year round. Which must be good news. Yeah. Even on Christmas Day and Boxing Day, you'll get somebody playing balls on these greens. By it, that's keen, isn't it? It is exactly. There's the artistic side as well, because of course there's Doddoth Brass Band. Yeah, the band's been with us a long, long time. And I would go back myself a fair while with, with band. And at that particular time, I'm looking back now, a good 40, possibly longer years, basically it was a village, it was basically a family village band. Or, even though it was under the Coley, under the Manor's Welfare and the Coley Banner, basically most of them come from the actual village of Dodworth and, and possibly one and two from the from same families. Mm. And of course they use the club to practice, don't they? They use the club to practice, yeah, and, and, and socialise as well in the, in the actual club. Uh, it's fair to say... They, pra they practice at least two or three times a week. And when you come up here on, a, on, on their practice nights and you've got bowling greens full, two bowling greens full, somebody at Astro Turf, somebody playing football down there, it's a real buzzing area. And we listen to the band at the same time as you're bowling, it brings a, sp a spring into your, into your wall. It's fair to say, Jack, isn't it, that the club hasn't always been quite as popular as people would like it to be. Do you think in the future it will be able to survive? I think it will be, able, will be able to survive. But, and you've also got to realise when once the colliery closed, and don't forget now we've been closed 28, 29 years, 
you know, it's a, a, a lot of members who used to work at the call used to come down for a drink, come down use the facilities, in on the way home from work or, or on the day on the days off. So recently, and over the last few years, we have slightly gone down on on membership in the club side, playing side with no problem. Them greens and them and grounds down here, as turf is used on a regular basis. So we've no problems there, but we need people in the club as well to socialise and to and to finance the club as well. Location and transport wise, Doddoth has everything going for it. The M1 Junction 37 is a part of Doddoth, giving direct access to London in one direction and to Leeds and the North in the other. There are regular bus services between Doddoth and Barnsley Town Centre and also to Silkston, Penniston and Stocksbridge. The great Victorian railway engineer Joseph Locke, who was raised in Barnsley, put Barnsley on the new Sheffield to Manchester railway line in 1846. Locke personally opened Doddoth Station. Dodder Station is on the direct rail link between Huddersfield and Sheffield via Barnsley and Meadowhall. But a growing community like Doddoth and neighbouring Gilroy have their ongoing issues and problems. James Kenny of Doddoth Community Group. James, uh, we've heard uh, that there's a lot of community spirit in Doddoth. What's your part in it? Uh, well, I'm part of the Doddoth Village Community Group, as you've said. Uh, we were formed in April this year. Uh, a number of like-minded individuals in the local community decided to get together to see if we could make Doddworth a better place to live in. It's already a very good place to live, but we thought we could keep it and make it better. Is this looking towards the future or is it old-fashioned civic pride? Oh, definitely towards the future. Yes, especially as the fact that the councils are getting less and less money now. Uh, it means that anything extra that needs to be done, we're going to have to do it ourselves, and that's what we came up with the idea within our first meeting. So, what have you got planned? Uh, well, first, before we've got what we've got planned, what we've managed to do so far... We've... Tell us about this, because, my goodness, there's a lot of work gone into it, hasn't there? There has. There's a, an awful lot of work with the planting, finding the plants, because we couldn't just go and spend all the money that we had. We didn't have a lot of money. Uh, obviously planting it up with our uh, great volunteers uh, and the watering of it when we didn't have a tap. <laughs> that can prove rather problematic, I should imagine. Yes, somebody had to come with a trailer and a water butt and we had to decant it into watering cans for about <laughs> three months. So let's look forward. Future <clears throat> plans. Future plans. Well, f for the future, we're hoping to work on the beds behind us over there, uh, doing some more work <clears throat> over there. Also, we want to... Uh, continue doing the litter picks which is one of the other activities that we're constantly doing. It's a bit of a problem around here that because well, it's, it's, it's a bit windy in places isn't it? This? It is there's well with the litter there's always litter uh, you can do an area and within a few weeks you find there's some litter come back but we're on it and we continue to uh, spot places where we can do, attack it uh, and then we do a litter pick. We're also doing graffiti where we'll either paint over the graffiti with special paint or we've got graffiti removal materials and uh, equipment so we can get rid of uh, graffiti as well. Sounds like you've got it all covered, so can we see you putting in for uh, Brit Britain's Beautiful Villages contest? I think we've got something potentially in place for Barnsley and Bloom next year. Maybe that might be unofficial. Well, good luck to you and let's hope you come top of it. Thank you very much. Nobody who spends any time in Doddoth could fail to be aware of two very important traditions of the place. Competitive sport and music. Cricket, football, boxing and particularly the fine Doddoth Miners Welfare Brass Band. The coal industry's greatest legacy to Doddoth is the Miners Welfare Centre. It houses the town's sporting facilities and is the band's headquarters and practice rooms. But the support of the coal industry for miners' welfare centres ended in the 1980s. The welfares now depend on providing entertainment and bar sales to carry on, and Doddoth Welfare, like most of the others, is struggling to keep going. The walls of the miners' welfare are a memorial to Doddoth's sporting achievements, 
Junior and senior football is in a strong demand and of a high standard, while amateur boxing, as elsewhere in the country, has rapidly grown in popularity. Boxing has attracted all age groups to Doth Miners Welfare Centre, as Ron Lawton explains. Ron, how many um, people, boys and men uh, and women as well, work out here? On an evening, there's approximately 15 to 20 young boys from the ages of 11. That's the required age for boxing. You only start boxing when you're 11 years old. 11 to maybe 20 years old. On the morning, which is morning now, you see, I take a, a, an elderly school. Old age pensioners, people in the 60s, and we have up to 10, 12 on the morning. But I work out and, and coach on the morning. Ah, right. And um, how is boxing going then in, oh, balance, it's, in it's the balance of Fantastic. Days? It's never been better than it is today, boxing in Barnsley. Both amateur boxing and professional boxing. It's absolutely flying. And you've got some good facilities here. How did yeah. you manage to get the money for those? Well, I come, I come under by, uh, of the uh, Dodworth Miners Welfare Scheme, and I got two grants and from South Yorkshire funding. And the old gym was dilapidated and it was wanted renewing. So with that £10,000 that I got, I ripped everything out and as soon as you see it now I bought a ring, carpeted, all these punch bags, it's all decorated and, that, and that, it was a great thing what happened, that was very good from, from South Yorkshire funding. Yeah. And uh, what would happen if, for example, the, uh, the um, welfare were to fold? It would be devastating because not only is this gymnasium, we've other facilities as well, what, what provide for young people. These young lads what come here uh, four and five times a week, they will then amalgamate at street corners and outside shops and get mischievous like no, normal lads do do. Um, that will me know it's all that. Here there's discipline, strict discipline, and they take that home with them. When there's strict, under strict discipline in, discipline in a gymnasium, that goes home with them and it carries on through the lives then. I know it's a regular thing what's said in boxing, You'll find out in boxing, a lot of lads what's made it to the top and been world champions, they've set off in Boston or in prison. And they've come out into boxing and then it's made different men of them. And now and they contribute then to young lads what's going to do the same now. Well, uh, thank you very much, Ron. That's, that's really good of you. Thank right, you. Thank you. Barnsley's famous for the number and quality of its brass bands. Doddeth Miner's Welfare Brass Band is probably second only to the Grimethorpe Colliery Band of Brassdorf fame. It's hugely popular in the town and its surrounding area. The Miner's Welfare is the band's traditional home and where the band and other junior training bands practice. But what happens if the worst comes to the worst and the welfare has to close? We asked Max Senior the band's chairman and band musician. Uh, Max, you're chairman of uh, the Doddeth Welfare Brass Band and you're also a trustee of Doddeth Miners Welfare. Now, I wondered if you could say what the history of the, of the, uh, of the brass band is and um, you know, how, how things have uh, progressed in the last few years. Uh, the band actually, uh, the village band as it was, which is now the Welfare uh, Brass Band, um, next year hits its 180th anniversary. So it's been around a very, very long time, since 1836. Uh, and the band's uh, been ongoing ever since, apart from a, a short period in the uh, late 90s, when the band actually went into demise. And that was partly as a result of the... Uh, the mine closing in Doddeth, which closed in 86. Uh, and a lot of players uh, decided to go elsewhere. And of course, we lost our uh, funding. Uh, and now the band today uh, has seen a resurgence and it's uh, self-subscribing. We, we all contribute to keep the band going because there is no external funding whatsoever. As you know, uh, miners at the pit uh, when it was thriving, it uh, used to uh, have so many pences a week deducted from their salaries, which actually went towards uh, looking after the finances of the welfare, of which the band was part of. 
And um, well, it, it, you know, it, now that you are back and uh, and and functioning again after that um, uh, hiatus in the 1990s, uh, what is it looking like? Are you getting young enough young players in? Sadly, not as many as we would like, unfortunately. Um, in today's world, um, as opposed to when I was a small boy growing up in the 50s and taking up music, uh, there are too many materialistic distractions these days for young children, uh, rather than being able to say, you know, Mum, Dad, I'd like to play a brass instrument in the village band. Uh, we have to try and cajole people to uh, come along and join us. And indeed, the band actually has a structure in place where we have training sessions every week from 5.30 onwards where we have a small beginners class and a training band that follows it, uh, and following that, the senior band. So we're always on the lookout for young people to come in and join us because at the end of the day, without these young people, uh, we won't have a village band in the future such as myself, who are getting on in years, uh, can't go on forever, unfortunately. And so, yes, we want to get young people involved as much as we can, and we are trying hard to do that. Well, how do you think that would be affected by um, the position of the uh, Doddeth Miners' Welfare? Because uh, as a trustee of that, I mean, you, you I, I know and you know that you're struggling a bit. Uh, absolutely, good question. Um, the welfare is an integral part of, as I see, the whole of the village. Uh, the miners' welfare uh, has these wonderful facilities for all sorts of activities, including um, rugby, cricket, football, boxing, uh, the AstroTurf. Uh, we've got nine junior football sides. Uh, we've got all the, the two bowling greens, uh, which are well used throughout the year. And of course, we have the band as well. Now, if the welfare was to close, and sadly over the past 15, 20 years, there are many miners' welfares gone to the wall, simply because the funding's not been in place. And as recently as this week, we've heard that Rockingham may be going as well. So we're absolutely desperate in Doddeth to keep it going. And of course, that's very difficult because times have changed. People don't go out like they used to do, having a drink in their local welfare clubs. Um, and so it's difficult to get people to come into the club to keep it going. Because if the welfare closed, we would lose absolutely every facility that's here for the community, including football, cricket, as I've mentioned, the boxing, the band. We would have to find a, another band room. Where would we go? We're looking at you know, thousands of pounds worth of equipment that we have already, and of course 25, 26, 27 members would have to find another venue. Not easy in a village this size of Doddeth. So we are desperate to keep the welfare going for the benefit of all the communities, more importantly for the benefit of the actual facilities that are here now and the members that actually take part. Thank you very much, Max. As in most villages and small townships, the Church of England has played an important part in Doddeth's history. St John the Baptist Church is now the parish church for Doddeth and Gilroy. Formed in 1840 from the ancient parish of Silkston, it was built for £2,518 by public subscription and consecrated in 1848. Though the dissenting churches, the Methodist and Wesleyan Reformed chapels, also established their place in the 19th century. Doddeth St John the Baptist Church of England Primary School is now an independent academy. Carisforth Community Primary School also has informal church links. So this is Doddeth, modern, a good place to live and work, friendly and caring and still fighting to rise above its problems. And it's a fight that it's winning. So you've seen it then. You know where it is now. You know what it's like. You know its history. You know its people. What's going to happen here in the future? Well, it's smack dab by the M1. It's got its own rail station. You can even get to London from here in one go. 
so it's got all the communication you need. It's got a vibrant community who care deeply about the place and its upkeep. They're proud of it. You could be here and be proud of it. Have you ever thought of moving to Dodworth? Even with your business? You could, you know. There are far worse places and it won't cost you all that much either. Look out for me again. I'll be doing another place sooner or later. Ta-ra.